Hope for a Rafur Shlema for Alexander Sender Dania Ben Avram Ben Rachel. We're on Tzurim Rabbonon, Volume Two, uh, page three seventy eight. We're going to finish up the laws of Tzedakah, Volume Two. As we have learned, the primary purpose of the mitzvah of Tzedakah and Meisr Ksofim is to support the poor, which is defined as those in society who currently lack sufficient funds to support themselves. What is the halachic definition of poor in this context with regard to who is permitted to receive tzedakah funds? The Mishnah in Peah states that one is considered poor if he has less than matayim zuz, 200 zuz, that remain in his possession, i.e., that he is not using for business investments. Means if he's using money for business investments, even less than 200, he's not going to be considered poor. So if he gets As, a social security check, he's not considered poor. We'll see in a minute what, we'll get to the Zman Azeh. We're going to see, we'll see what, well, very good question. Surprised. And also presents a number of other important rules concerning this question. So let's learn the mission in Peah first. These items are things that the, that the Ani is entitled to. The farmer, when he picks up his grain and he, whatever he drops, he, he has to leave. It's called Leket. Shikha is other type of grain that he forgets in the field. Shikha is Omer. Things that he drops. It's a single shibolet or single chita. And is a sheaf, a sheaf, a sheaf, a connection. Peya is where he leaves the corners. Midin, you have to leave the corners of the field. And Maisrani. So, Hailo Maisam Masayim Chaser dinner, let's say at 199. It means if a thousand people now jump on him and each one give him a dinner, it's okay, he's entitled to accept it. Because at the time, he was 199, he was entitled to tzedakah. Let's say he has a house or he has assets, but they're collateralized. Hi, Michael. So we're on page 378. Why don't you share with him uh, we need volume two? I don't have a volume two for him. We'll get it. We'll have volume three for him. Um, so let's say he does, his assets are collateralized. So he has assets, but for example, a, the, the, his wife's ksuba, if he, did, he dies or he divorces her, so the funds have to be paid to his wife, and for example, if he doesn't have any uh, liquid assets, it's his fields or his house that would have to go to pay, pay his wife. Or if he owes money to somebody and that person has a lien on his house, so that depletes his asset. So, hareze The din is even if he has the house, uh, so you think he has an asset, since he doesn't have liquid assets of Matayim Zuz, he's allowed to take. We don't make, and we'll see in a minute, we don't make him sell his house or his possessions that are lean. Ein mechaiv no solim kors beis of his klay tashmisho, says the mission. So, mishi yesh lo chamishim zuz vu no sevin no sin bayam. He has 50 zuz, but he's doing business with it. Harezo lo yito. So he's not considered an oni. The kol mishi ein otzorach lito vu no tail. If a person is not uh, roy to receive and yet he takes he, 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 he will be needy at some point the commission somebody who forgoes tzedakah he has the right to take but he didn't take he will not he'll end up living a long life he will be enabled to be given funds to provide others from his from what he has. So it's almost a schus for him by not taking. Now, that's the Mishnah. So how does the Shulchan Aruch in Yoradeya codify these halachas? So he says, Mishyesh lo mazun stay siddhis. He says, lo yitol mea tamchui. The tamchui was a plate that was in shuls that had food on it. And people were allowed to take on a daily basis. So for example, it was considered normal to eat two su'udos per, per day. So let's say he had no funds for two su'udos for that day. 
he was entitled to take for the Tam Chum. Mozen Arba Esrei Seudos. Now, 14 Seudos were used in a week. If he didn't have that, if he had enough for that, he wouldn't be able to take from, let's say, the Tom Chei Shabbos. There wasn't an institution called the community kitchen. Kupa, it's, no, Kupa, no, it's the, Kupa, it's the pushkin. Kupa was the institution that gathered funds for yeah. Anim, mm-hmm. like our Tom Chei Shabbos, as opposed mm-hmm. to this Tom Chui, which was just, let's say, a food plate. Yeah. That, that's how they explain the difference between a Tom Chui and a Kupa. Yeah. Now, he has 200 zoos, and he doesn't do business with it. These are all exclusions to Tzedakah, right? Lo yitot Tzedakah. But he has 200 less than one. He doesn't do business with that. So there is Tamchui and there is Kupa, and there is No, Tamchui and Kupa are under the realm of Tzedakah. it's Kupa. Right, but, but, it's much more than, and then no, no, but that's the same din, the same get. First, it has to do with food. Stay sudas per day, fourteen sudas per week, and then you were entitled to these food distribution centers, the katamchui, which was like maybe in the shul, which was a plate, and then the, the kupa, which is more, a more standardized form, like our tonkei shabbos, which would deliver food to the house. Else. No, it yeah. falls under the realm of Tzedakah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is a different... Matayim Zuz, Matayim Zuz, it's a different level. Matayim Zuz, we're going to see in a minute, Matayim Zuz in a minute is, um, Mona Masayim is how much a, a husband had to promise his wife first year of marriage. So Absula got Masayim, and Almona got Mona, got a hundred. So the post we're going to learn out that Masayim Zuz means enough funds to last you for a year to support you for a year. It's a large amount of funds. Yeah. So if you don't have that, you're entitled to, to, to tzedakah. That's it. And then the food issue is this issue of tamchui, but that's all the gather tzedakah. So Says, it's just for food, not for anything, just to survive a year with tamchui. Clothing, clothing, rent, okay. uh, everything. Cost of living, cost of living, cost of living. To, to live for a year. Hago. Umisho hoilech mebeso v'nosemi ir li ir Somebody's on the road collecting. Means what? Remember, if you're 199, you were allowed to get a lot in one shot. Now let's say the guy's on the road. So the Ramos giving us a kula here. He's saying if he had a mind, wherever he had a mind to go to, that's already considered pamachas because he he went out in poor. He's going to come back maybe with a lot, a lot of money, but at the time he's entitled to take. Because it's considered pamachas, but there's a getter to that as well. Now, vafilu nosel lo masayim zuz biyirachas, right? And and he's allowed to collect more than that. So even if he already got above the two hundred zuz, which is enough for a year in one city, he can still collect from that city. Because when he entered that city, he was less. He was like in the one ninety nine, and he was entitled for a thousand people to give him at one time to get him above. But he can't go beyond. He can't go to another city, right? Yochel lekabel yoiser there. But umikan ve'elech aser. But to travel beyond, he can't. Then yesh lo harbe. Now let's say he has money. He has more than two hundred. But v'hu alav b'chov. He has debts. O shemimushkan l'chtov l'ksubas ishto. Or it is mimuskan. It's it is collateralized to the ksub of his wife. He's allowed to take. Which every money, by the way. Say it again. Every money that the person has. Yeah, a filum ad glima kasfoi. But. But as long as you have liquid assets to give the ksuba, let's say the ksuba today is worth forty thousand dollars. Okay, let's say for example, they paskin today what it is. So then you don't have to rely on your on a lien. If you have forty thousand liquid, then you give her forty thousand liquid, and then her ksuba is paid. To, to, so no, any so so, so right. all of your remember the first time you got ma- when you get married. So then, even your hard assets, your house and your fields are going to be. If you don't have any other assets, she has the first lien. So the, for example. If she comes at, at either divorce or death to the estate and says, okay, pay me my ksuba. The ksuba doesn't have liquid funds. She has the right to go to your house and have it sold and get paid for it. That means she has a primary lien. And or on it, like, even if she had sold it to somebody else, she has a lien on that. And it's a very impo- imp- important halacha. We don't require the person to sell that asset. He's allowed to keep his house, even though it's collateralized, and he's allowed to take stock of if he has no liquid, other liquid funds. It's it's a chesed to the person because we don't want to embarrass him and kick him out of his house. It's almost like those you know there are laws like O.J. Simpson 
his pension plan, like in Florida, you, you, yeah, they couldn't get at it. Or your house, like in Florida, you can't, there are laws, laws Florida, that, that, that you, even if you have debts, it's bankruptcy, whatever, yeah. there are protections. So you, you see, it's very early, early precedent in Chazal that they understood that concept. Vim yesh lo bayis u kle bayis harbe, he has furniture, vim lo masayim zuz, hareze yitol. He's still allowed to take from charity, he doesn't, they're not, they don't force him to sell those things. Vein tzarch lim kot kle boys, they don't require him. Afilo him shal kesef izov. Like, let's say he has golden, golden plates, you could think, well, sell the golden plates, buy regular plates, and with the extra you'll be able to live on it. We don't require him to do that. He's allowed to live in the standard that he was living. Now listen, it's not so posh. We're going to have Gedorim on this. So that's regarding utensils that he eats and drinks from. Umalbush, clothing, umatsos, bedding, the coyotes of him. Aval migredo o eli shamshel kesev. Let's say he has an implement of work, like a, a mortal and pestle, by which you grind... Uh, uh, or another, some kind of specialized I- instrument that you use for work, mochram. So he, that he can sell, v'lo yitol not stocka. Yeah, but that, that, if or, that's or, part of his work. Or let's say it's not part of his work. Idea. It's something superfluous. It's, okay. it's something yeah. superfluous. Yeah, it's a luxury. It can't yeah. It's a luxury. So, something superfluous. It's a luxury. Something superfluous. So ha'de'en klei tashmish shal kesef zav. Walter had a question I could see on his face. He was bothered by it. That which we don't require him to sell his gold and silver stuff. That's, he's still, where well, he's not necessarily taking on a regular basis from, from that community home? chest. He's coming privately, private. private people are giving to him, as opposed to the community. Private individuals are giving it to him privately so as not to embarrass him. He, if you go to the kupa, so everybody knows you're at the kupa. So if he's reached that point, we don't give him from the community until he sells those items. So in the time of Chazal, 200 zuz was the amount needed to cover a person's expenses for one year. This is the reason that one who marries a woman who was previously unmarried is obligated to give her 200 zuz as the sum of her ksuba, since that is the equivalent of living expenses for a year. The Rashbash, who is a Svarti Rishon, explains that this amount can fluctuate based upon the time and location. Therefore, whoever does not have sufficient funds for expenses for a year in that time and place would qualify for tzedakah. Says the Shuta Rashbash, Everything is based on place and time. The basic calculation Chazal came up with is for your expenses, for you, your wife, your children. And all the expense, food, clothing, shelter, all of that. For a year. For one year. It's a large amount. It's a lot of money. It's a large amount. Especially in Los Angeles. What are we afraid of? I said these guidelines. Are we worried that it's taking away money from another poor person when he doesn't deserve it? We're going to learn like this, Sherry. If you give tzedakah to a person who is unworthy of tzedakah, you don't get schar for the tzedakah. So they have to. So they have to determine who is considered a poor person who is allowed to present himself for tzedakah. He wants to be honest. You want to give to an honest person. So this is the, the financial. This is the financial getter that allows it. The onus on the giver. Uh, you're not supposed to give a person like that. I would. Say, we'll see in a minute. We'll see in a minute. If you are, if you know for sure that he is a ramoy, that he's a cheater, you you should not give him. We're going to see why, because he is not. You're going to be being misayaya him to be a goslin. Well, let's wait. It's clear that, give, that giving the money is not the mitzvah. It's it's a fulfilling a need because we said before, if a guy needs stucca and he doesn't take it, he needs a well, 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 but if it was a mitzvah just to give, you could say he's preventing other. It's based on need. Absolutely. So it's based on. Need. It's based on need. Need alone. And and so so Bernie, the point is. You will not get schar. We'll see in a minute. If you don't know that he's a Ramoy 
and you give him because you think you're helping him, you will get some schar. We'll have a, we'll, we'll, we'll have a diyun about that. Shulchan Aruch also writes that this calculation depends on time and place, and anyone who lacks sufficient funds to support himself and his family may receive tzedakah. He says something else. He's entitled to receive enough tzedakah to give him a principle which, with which will give, which will produce an endowment, right. dividends right. to support himself and his family. Wow. That's a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. Like a million dollars. That's why they say putting somebody in business yeah. would be the, is the first choice. Okay. But, right. but I'm saying just to get her stock up, it's a huge amount. <laughs> Says the Yakut Yosef who My is... My question is, we yes. all get accosted with, from different areas, right? To, to give tzedakah. We all get accosted one way or another, institutions, individuals, or whatever, right? So, are you responsible to give to each and every one who, who asks for it? Or is it enough for you to basically money, determine? No, but we learned last time. To? We learned last time if someone presents himself with his hand open, it's an Aveira not to give him something. And there's a minimum you give, right? We said, we talked about four zoos or whatever it is. That's a separate din of giving something to everybody. And then we talked about what you have to be refarnes that what, you're an individual. You have to you have to do hesegiat. You have to do what you can afford. We said so. You're not required. And you all yivazves yoyser mechaymesh. And we said that the average should be ten percent. So you have to keep a cheshbon. Yeah, but the ten percent you can dis, you can elect yes. who to give it to. Yeah, and there was a thing though that if someone presented themselves to you <laughs> asking for it, it's not a good thing to let him go without something. That was, that's but, uh, the, this sounds like a, it's an obligation of the shul or the community to provide with the kupa. The kupa. So, so what about the other needs of the community? The community needs to build the shul. The community needs to build. The, build the but that's not the getter stock. Yeah, but 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 there is a limit. There's a hilchos beis yeah, and you're not allowed to live in a community that doesn't have a shul or a mikvah. So, 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 so the thing. community has limited resources. So where where the gaboy stock or the leaders of the community? How they can deal with all those needs? Where is, where, what is the first okay. thing? You can't live in a city without a shul. So you can't live in a city without a mikvah. No, I think mikvah goes first. Any, yes, any. but that's not the dinate stalker. He's asking. Yeah. asking yeah. Which takes priority? He can, he can say what he's asking, but basically, what's the priority? Yeah. Yeah. What is the priority? Is the tzibur a priority over the stalker of the ani? Or is the Ani a, tzib, a, a priority? Ani, 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 I think it's both. Okay. To be the shul, you support okay. somebody that has a But Nati, my answer to you, that's not be, but that's, but that's not the dinate stalker. The 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 din of building a shul yeah, but is on the side. What is the what are the leaders of the community? What they what they need? They need a shul or they need to support somebody that has a You need both. You need both. You need both. You have to shake a lulav. And you have to eat matzah. There, there is no, there is, there's some, some dinim have kedima, and the Rambam gave us a list of eight gedorim. There he didn't deal at all with the tzibur dikkan needs of shul and school and all that. No, it's a question, but those are not bedinet stoka. Yeah. Now the sh the community no, has the to wrestle is, with. If you have a limited amount of money, X amount of money, you're, what's you're the, the preference? Of okay. you're in it looks like so we know, number one. You, we know you can't live in a community in without a mikvah. So no. that's so that's gonna go first, and could you daven in the place of someone's yeah, home as opposed to shul? No some... food. They, there's a big friend, There's a couple of families who don't have any food, and you're the only one who can if, either build the big for okay. them food. If it's a if it's a pikuach nefesh, you'd have to give them food first. That's just that's me din pikuach nefesh. So so that until that, that's how it so would go. Depends on the the the, 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 the basic, how drastic how drastic it is. Absolutely, I, I think yeah. the yeah. questions are great. I think the questions are great, and we'll see when we get to the the other dedim whether whether the this there it's so far in Hilchos in your idea your idea doesn't deal with the the, the, the battle of the heads between let's say Tziburdika needs, but it did it did mention by the way the shach last week mentioned mm -hmm. if you were calculating your and you've designated. A certain funds that you now have for tzedakah, <coughs> could could you use it to buy your lulav and your matzah and bris? He said you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, if you build a school according to the shach, 
with the Meiser funds, you've, you've done both. You've fulfilled stock as well. It's under Meiser Ksofim. There's a section in the entry at the end, at the end, the uh, note in the end. Where there's going to be... The, the, the priorities of giving. Okay, very good. Okay, okay, very good. <laughs> Says the Yalkut Yosef, the son, the son of Rav Ovadia, Bismana Zeh, ain't sark le dagdek shlo litein stok le mishyesh lo mesayim zuz. This whole diyun, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Shlo nemar shir zeh le bimeyem. This was the time of Chazal. Aval achshav yochol li tol tzedakah ad shilo keren kdei shi parnei shuv neveso Revach. He understands this. What was just said tonight? That this is a huge amount. That you don't have to be medakdik. This pasayim zuz. A person is allowed to collect until he has sort of a principle that spill spins off funds that he's allowed to live on. Or income. That's what he said. Yeah. That's what or income. What I'm saying. That's what I said. It spins yeah. off. Right? If a rich person becomes poor, one one must provide him with all the amenities that he is used to, because he might be in distress otherwise. Says the says the Gemara Ksubis, de machsoro, atam etzuva lav lefarneso, vei atam etzuva lav laashro. You don't have to make him wealthy. You have to be give him his needs. But asher yechsar lo. But what if he's deficient? Afilu sus lirkov alav. Let's say he's used to riding on a horse, or veevet lorutz lefana, or he had a or he had a herald. He had a herald. Harold running in front of him, announcing him arriving, he's allowed to it. Listen to this. There was a wealthy person who became poor, and Hillel Hazokin arranged his tzedakah, and he arranged even for Eved Lorenz Lofonov. Pabachas Lamatza Eved Lorenz Lofonov. There was a day where the guy that he hired to run in front of him wasn't available, the Rotz Lefon of Shloisha Milan. Mm-hmm. And Hillel himself ran in front of him as the Eved mm-hmm. for three months. Says the Shulchan Aruch in Yoridea, Kama noisin lo'ani, Dei machsoro asher yechsor lo. Kate said, Im haya ra'av, if he's hungry, yachilu, feed him. Haya tzarek liksus, he needs clothing, yichasu. Ein lo klebayis, he doesn't have furniture, kona lo klebayis. Vafilum haya darko lirkov al sus, let's say he's used to writing a horse or a jaguar, vevid lover, so fun of chayy ashir, vehe oni became poor. Koinel asus veevid, you have to buy him those things. The kainel kol echad the echad lufi mashet sarich. Haroy los is lo pas. Someone all is gets is all enough for him is a piece of bread. No, it's not pas. Let's say a person wants flour. Excuse me, dough. Isa. No, it's not isa. Mita. No, it's not mita. Bed. Haroy li tenel pas cham. A person wants hot bread. You have to give him chama. Tzonein, tzonein. Lachil etoch piv, he's used to being fed by a spoon, lachil. So that sounds like if somebody... No, Let's go further. Uh, Let's go further. Somebody, somebody, somebody sick. Somebody is sick, so you need to... That's part of tzedakah. Yeah. Ein lo isha, guy comes, he's single. Yeah. Ubo lisa, and he comes, he says, you need to help me get married. Masiyin lo, you help him get married. The Vesorchun lo bayis, you rent a house for them. Umatsin lo mito kleita shmisho. The, no, by the way, you notice, first you get him ready with a house and all those things, then you can marry him with a woman. So is it an obligation to find somebody to share? It's, it's obligation to at least yeah. give him the financial wherewithal yeah. that 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 he could he can be married no, but off. But also, <laughs> when people come to collect for uh, kala, you know, yeah. that's what they're collecting. It's the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Says the Ramah, this applies, this, this whole thing is when there, there's a community chest, the way it was in Europe, it was a vad, they took care of it. The individuals, you don't have a personal responsibility to make sure the guy has a jaguar. The community, they evaluated people when they came. And if he was a wealthy person, that's, that's the ways of the Torah. The ways of the Torah is also to be concerned about his emotional health. And they were concerned that a person who was used to a certain finery of living would be depressed. That's the way of the Torah. And they would, that's, but that's for them. That's not your personal ischaivus to deal with that aspect of it, says the Ramah. Mm-hmm. He, he, tells, he tells the Rabbim of his troubles. 
the yochid mechuyov as individual, you have to refer to the community if this is somebody in stress that needs to have support. No, the you're poor. Not mechuyof, you're no, not but the poor, the poor person has to inform the tzibur. Not the, the poor, poor. Not yeah, the, the poor. The yochid that supposed to give tzedakah is not supposed to give tzedakah. He is mechuyov if he. He is not mechuyov to give the tzedakah directly to the needy, to the distressed person. He is mechuyov to go to, to the to the gabek tzedakah and let them know. And let them know that there is a case in the community that needs to be supported. The main rabbi metzlo yitin ayachid in yada masayas. Let's say there is no community to help out this particular person. So you have to do what you can do im yodo masegas, as much as you can go. Now, if you're a wealthy guy and you can provide him with what he needs, including this extra thing, then you are a makayim tzedakah at a very high level. So you're talking approximately of more than the 10% or 15%? No, you should not be mevazbez yoyser mi 20% okay. in any situation. Okay, well, good thing you have to say In that. any situation. Okay. However, the point scheme right, right, that there are two conditions for this, it's not so partial. Says the Avos Tzedakah, who's a contemporary author uh, writing about Tzedakah. You have a wealthy person who was used to living on a high madrega, Oni became poor. You have to give him what he's used to. He says there's two conditions to that. He says this is a, 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 a Des, uh, a family that has been wealthy going back many generations. Avalim haya oni. But let's say he was a poor person and then he just got used to living on the well. You're not required if a guy is not naturally wealthy and descended from wealthy people to, to do that. But let's say he's made a good living doing stock and he's gotten used to these things. You're not required to that. How do you discriminate between you, a okay, person let's, let's who is wealthy from previous generations? Poor family, yeah, and, and 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 but he doesn't say that. No, he says, he says an ani who's through tzedakah is doing this. Right. Not that he worked himself up and became a wealthy person. Imaya ani. The hirgil atzmo bekach. He got used to the through yes. the tzedakah funds on the cheshbon tzedakah, then you're not required to, to, to get him back to that level. There's a second condition. It's not so posh. If we think that not returning this guy to a certain standard is going to lead to health problems, then you might be mechoyiv to do it. But it's just, if we, if you see, it's not going to, the guy's going to not get a heart attack. It, no, if it's, if it's, he just is used to these hanos and he's not going to have these hanos anymore, you're not required to do it. You're not required to do it. Now, when providing the poor with all their needs, one should not give them items that are unnecessary. Dira, meaning a, a shelter, be good, clothing, kailing, furniture. You give him what he needs, not extra. Those absolute needs. The nearest what's considered extra? That is very difficult because it's personal. A lot of it is based on his custom, how he was living, etc., etc. So it's 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 not that partial. Now, when one performs the mitzvah tzedakah, one certainly desires that the money is received by those who truly need it, and that it will be used in the best possible manner. What does the halacha suggest in order to ensure that this is achieved? So the Gemara Nehrevin says that it is improper to give all of one's tzedakah to one person. So you avoid a potential problem. Let's say that person happened to be a guy who's not Roy, so by you disseminating funds to many people, you're going to stay out of that problem. Right? If you are a person, now remember, there's chaf dalad matlis kahuna. You give truma, you have to give the, the cheeks, you have to the chaz of a shok, many matlis kahuna. Chaim is uh, enjoying a good to talk here. Right? Now let's say you had a neighbor and you were used to giving all of your gifts to one coin. You know what? Says the Gemara, it's not a good idea. Maybe Rav Oilam. It'll, you'll end up bringing famine in the world. Shenemar, vim ira haya iri, haya koin I understand. 
the David David Koyen and the Kulam Allah. What do you mean? He was he was David's Koyen. What he was it was only a coin in ref, reference to David, not anybody else. What does that mean? David Amelech always sent his gifts to this one coin. And Uksiv Basrei by Ra'av Bimei David. It led to a raw. So because it led to, uh, maybe he wasn't a, a roy person, and it, le- it led to a problem. And the Shulchan Aruch rules that way. Lo he, was, he was a rule because he was a coin, but you're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to give to one person. But, but we're going to see that it, we, we, why not? Because he might not be a roy person. And it led to, you didn't get schar, and he didn't get schar, so it may have led to a problem. Why else, why would it lead to rav? It's got to be a negative thing that, that led to Ra. So Ira wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a coin? No, yeah. not that he wasn't a coin. Yeah. He was needy. Well, let's see. First the Shulchan Aruch says, Lo yitein adam kol tzid koisev lo aniechad duvad. And the Shach says, Lo aniechad duvad, oi lo korav echad, u lo aniech shar korav. For example, you're giving tzedakah to relatives and you leave all your other relatives alone. Right, if the sole recipient of the money is not a completely worthy individual, that may have led to issues. <laughs> Says the Lavosh, <laughs> You have more schos if you give it to an Ani who's really worthy than one who's not worthy. Mm-hmm. It's a relative scale. You might find an Ani who's, who's more Hogun than the other guy. By giving to only one guy, you're cuffing all the rest so of them. In the case of David, he's shorting, he shorting other people. So the case of David, the law became not because Ira wasn't worthy or wasn't a coin. He was a coin. But the other Koranim were jealous so and they were sound. That's the reason that became a law. According to the Chochmah Saddam, now the Chaya Yadam, we're all used to, was Halacha on Orachayim. In fact, before the Mishnah Berurah, was became uh, the the, the rigor text. Many in America would use the Chayyadim. I remember bringing the Chayyadim in the choir to yeah. both to Hillel. I remember I, with, with Chazal Glickman. You know, I had the Chayyadim all the time. If you remember, there's a Tefillah Zak. The Tefillah Zaka that we say was written in the Chayyadim. It was before you had Machzoyrim. Art school wrote the Machzor. All of a sudden, there's a Tefillah Zaka. But look at your Chayyadim. There's Tefillah Zaka there. I used to say my Tefillah Zaka. We were all bali tfila by by Beth Jacob. I'm speaking to Natu. What you should say every day in the morning. Say it again. I have to say now we understand. You must have said it a lot of times. No, that no. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Well, with the bali tfila, I had to say tfila zaka. It was in that chayyodim. So the chayyodim's chibur on Yoridea is chachmasod. So it's the same author, Rav Danzig, and so it's a, it's very nice for Isser Vehetter too. The Chochmah Sadam. It's an abbreviation. All of the various dinim we're going to have in volume four. But this Vehetter, the Chochmah Sadam is a very good resource for that. So according to the Chochmah Sadam, the law of not giving all of one stuck to one person applies when doing so on a constant basis. However, if one gives this manner on a non permanent basis, it's permitted. Well, you tell me what the cost of law on the echo of the car of echo of the near shark croivim. The nearly the rot salomer shall oil him in us in Rakhmazan. It means it's a permanent thing. If you want for a while, give it to one guy, that's okay. Another important halacha based on the same principle of ensuring that deserving individuals actually receive tzedakah is mentioned in Baba Basra. According to the Gemara, we must do a little investigation whether one who requests tzedakah is really considered poor. Though the Amoyroim debate to which types of tzedakah such an investigation is required. So we're going to see a little hierarchy. On Rav Huna, Boydkin lemezoinois ve'en boydkin laksos. A guy comes saying, I need food, I need clothing. So regarding the clothing, you don't need to do an investigation. <coughs> regarding the mezonos, you do. Now, the Gemara says, Iboy say makro, if you want, I'll give you a pasuk to support that. But Iboy say masvar, in fact, if you want, I'll give you logic. Iboy say masvar, it starts with the logic. Hai komavazi, v'hai loy komavazi. That someone who's hungry, at least publicly, you don't know that it's humiliating to him. That means if you walk around in tatters and rags, it's very humiliating. Mm. So one is one is a bizoyan and one is not a bizoyan. Mm. So therefore, since he comes to you asking for clothes, it's a bizoyan, you don't have to you don't have to uh, go into a detailed investigation. Iboy say makra. It says in Yeshaya, Halo Porus la Rav Lachmecha. And you even though we read it with a sin, 
The, the drasha is by besim ksiv, but we darshan proish drash v'chakor tchil like like the prushim, like those that are evaluate that do an investigation before you give him v'hader haver yeah like a pair v'hader haver and then give him, and that's by lechem v'hasam ksiv kitira arum v'ksiso kitira la'alter. It means once you see that he doesn't have clothes, you can give him right away la'alter. You don't have to do any investigation. So Rav Huna bases it both on Tzvara and on Pasuk. Rav Yehuda Omar, this is Rav Yehuda the Amoira, not, right, when we say Om Rav Yehuda Rav, so that's the Amoira Om Rav Yehuda. So he says the opposite. Boitkin leksus, the ein boitkin le mezonis. It's punk fakert, that it's for clothing that you should investigate, not for mezonis. E boi se me Tzvara, e boi se me Kra. E boi se me Tzvara, hi kemet sarali, vai loi kemet sarali. Listen, being hungry is a lot of tsar. Sometimes you don't have the right clothing, it's not so much of a tsar. And he boys say makra, hachaksiv halo pros le rav lachmecha. That means pros la alter. Give him his piece. Pros can also mean a piece, like prusa. Pros la alter means give it to him right away with a karina. Like we read pros, not the, because it's with a sin. Vasam ksiv kisira arm viksiso. That means kishayira lacha. Yira lacha means you've got to see it properly through investigation. There's a brisa to support the way Rav Yehuda learned. Amar kisuni boid kimachvav. If he asks for clothing, you got to check after him. But if he says parnasuni, which means give me food, ain boid kim. The Shulchan Aruch follows, as we know, when the Gemara at the end of the sugya brings a brisa. Tanya kavosi, like one of the Amay Roim, usually Shulchan Aruch will pass him that way, and he does. Mi shabavu amar hechilani. If someone is requesting food, you don't have to check after him if he's a cheater. He's not well clothed. He says, I need a new suit. Now, that's only something you don't know. If you know that this is the local poor person, and you know that he's poor, then of course you don't have to do a badika. Nevertheless, if he actually arrives looking really disheveled, without respectable clothing, you can, the Ritva says you can give him clothing right away. Do an investigation. That means, mm-hmm. But if he's naked, then you got to clothe him right away. So the entire discussion of Gemara refers to a poor person who comes to the Gabai of the communal fund. In that case, he must be examined concerning clothing or the like. But if a poor person comes to someone in a private capacity, Rav Menashe Klein, in the Mishnah Lachos, Rav Menashe Klein lived in Borough Park. He's, uh, he was, uh, he's not alive anymore. He uh, was one of the people who supported the Yeruv in Los Angeles. <coughs> he gave the Heksher in Los Angeles early on. That one need not examine him so carefully if he comes privately. Says the Mishnah Lachos, Masha Netlechu B'Gemor Le'inyan Iboitkin L'Mezonius V'Iboitkin L'Ksus O'Lehepech Mayri exists, but Mishabola Gaboim Sheshlam Kupa Shots Dokum of Akesh Parnasoni. So the Mishnah Lochus is learning in the Shulchan Aruch, although it's not very clear. Shulchan Aruch didn't say it, the Gemara didn't say it, but he's learning in the Sugya that that's when a guy comes to the community chest. We shouldn't get involved in an investigation, we should just give him. Nevertheless, with all of this, if one gives to an unworthy person, the Gemara Baba Basra indicates that he does not receive reward for it. I want to ask you a question. Yeah, you lost it. Could you give me a little ginger ale, please? Thank you. They, they, they give the guy the blonde body to say, yeah. so, but so, that, so, so what are they doing? They're coming to, they're, they're, coming to the they're coming to, but they're coming, they're not coming to the Kupa, they're coming to people in the, in, 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 the, in, in their own private homes. Walter made it very good. Let's let's okay, let's. Go to the no, 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 no. But so that's why they should. According to this, they don't have to. They, they shouldn't have to, and you should give them a stock. You shouldn't have to look at it when they come to you personally. If they yes. come to the kupa of the shul and say, "Listen, I want money," then they have to do an investigation. So Walter's point will be dealt with. It will be the last word in the ilchus I Just want to put it on the shelf for a minute. Am Rav Yitzchak. Well, food stamps is money. Yeah, so but that's for food. That's for food. Okay. But it's 
closes, you see the person is in rags. And on the okay, street. well, the food, you'll have to give him money to help him with the food. Now, on Rav Yitzchak, my dechsev rodev tztok of a chesed, somebody who runs after tztok of a chesed, yim tzachay mutztoka, will find life and tztoka. So that, that seems very bizarre. Mishum de roide tztoka, yim what do you mean? It's sort of giving him a curse. I mean, somebody who gives tztoka is going to end up needing tzedaka? Ela loy melecha. Kol aroi defach ar tztoka, kodesh baruch hu man silo mols. Number one, if you run after man, uh, giving tztoka, kodesh baruch hu, make sure you have money. The oisa ban tztoka, and you will do righteous tztoka with it. That means he will send righteous anim to it. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak omar kodesh baruch hu man silo bnei adam amuogan amuoganim lasos len tztoka. Kedei lekabel aleyan scharu. Lafuke mai, where does it come to exclude? Lafuke midrash rabba. The door, me the door is rabba. The door is rabba. Might exceive. The you muchshalim lefanecha, the eis apcha asevahem. This is Yermio Navi. Let them be made to stumble before you. Deal thus with them in the time of your anger. On Rav Yermio Lefnei Kodesh Baruch Hu, we born in Shalolim. I feel a bishasha koifnes yitzran. Umavakshin lasot stuck lefanecha. That means he's talking about Klai Yisrael at the time of the Chorban that they're going to want to do tzedakah. He chshilam bivnei adam shenim avin. He's he's giving Klai Yisrael a curse. They should be sent people that are not muganim kadeshli kabel and schar. What do we see from this Gemara that if you give tzedakah to someone who's really not worthy of tzedakah, you don't get schar for it. The nimuk the nimuke Yosef clarifies that one still receives some reward if one doesn't know the person and only finds out later that he's a, char- a charlatan. Says the Mulke Yosef in Baba Kama, He knows that he's a charlatan, and you still give him. It's possible that he's a Roy Oni, he gets schar. When you gave the tzedakah, you thought he was poor, and we go after your kavana. The old and the ilo temahachi. If you wouldn't say this, atano does what they come and mugani b'makom shein and nikarim. Otherwise, if you're going to say, unless you know perfectly who everybody is, don't give it. All these people are going to come. The people are going to get their doors, the, the door slammed in their face if they're not known. Umaisa berebi in perak ashutafim the Messiah law. The other amar yichnesu akol, and that there's rebbe would say, let everyone come in. Due to the fact that one may not, may not receive a full reward if unworthy individuals receive tzedakah fund, one must make some ishtadlus to give to poor people that are worthy, even if it involves a bit more effort. As the Orzeru has said, Shema Toimar, Kolabalik, what's last of tzedakah v'chesed, koifetz, who must speak of the Yodo, that you should jump to perform the tzedakah, who man tzil no mugarim lakach, tamud lomer, maya kar chazdach alokim, you have to invest some effort to make sure that what you're doing is acceptable. If you're not always going to get everyone at your door who are completely muganim. Now, the Avid Stucker writes that the imperative to check that the need is indeed legitimate applies to other types of stuck as well. Nira, shall call Sharsugat Stucker, Kamo, Lachnosis Kala, Oladior, the Chadome, Gam Kane, Tsarch Pedika. If he's not in eminent starvation, the only one, somebody who comes famished out of hunger that you don't have to do some kind of investigation. So that goes back to what Walter was saying, why the Bada has that classic thing. That Hang on. It is evident from these sources that one may not give stucca to a person that one knows is a, char- a charlatan and does not qualify as deserving of stucca as spelled out by the Avad Staka in the name of Rosh Hashanah Zaman. The Sefer Tztoko Mishpat, Kosa B'Shem HaGon Rosh Hashanah Zaman O'Erbach, Osir Lotei Tztoko L'Poshet Yad Kishu Yodea Shu Ramoi. You are prohibited to give money to somebody that you know who's a trickster. Vavol B'Shem Gomer B'Libo Losis Lo Rosh Hashanah Matana. And even though if in your mind you said, oh, you know, I'm not giving it to him Begeder Tztoko, I'm giving him as a gift. V'lo L'Shem Tztoko, B'Nei Shu Machshel Lassam Akabal Shem Iskavi Lavar Lisser Gezel. You are dying. That's why I said before. You're misayeya. This guy. This guy's trying to steal you. He knows. He knows he's not an oni, and yet, yet he's taking. So you're sort of contributing to his ma'isa gezel. 
Also, be careful. Don't give more than what an Oni uh, what needs. What if he threatens you? And he says, you know, if you don't give me, I'm going to hire myself out to a Goy. Or I'm going to be Machal Shabbos. You don't have to fall for that. Other cheaters will use that. So it, you, if you start, once we start down that path, it's only going to lead to more problems. So Rav Shmuel de Modena, the Marjdam writes, that one who is capable of working, but prefers to ask for charity because it's easier for him, a phenomenon that exists today as well, is not included in the mitzvah tzedakah. Means tzedakah should be for if somebody he 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 learns something but he can't get a job, and it's possible that he's going to have a, a life-threatening problem. If the regular people in the community go to work. And they get their source of income mitirkam v'amelim v'yegir kapem, and from their from their livelihood. But it's only who wrote sele yisnaig minu mohunik bilti amel. He wants to live a good to talk. He doesn't want to work, but he wants to get stucka. That's not begeder yechsarlo. Kiu mechaser tzatzmo. The ish kaze ain alat zibur mutal lefarnas of lo krova. The community is not required to provide for somebody like that. For example, if somebody has money and he doesn't want to provide funds for his family, we don't provide funds for him. So to avoid all these problems, Rav Ariel in Beit El recommends establishing a special rabbinic committee, committee for every community or region that will examine the request of all those who wish to collect food stock in that area. If they determine that the request is legitimate, They'll provide them with a letter of approval so the residents will know that one collecting deserves to receive staka. And this is, in fact, custom in many cities, both in Israel as well as in the Gullahs. But if the guy... There's a certificate that says, open and tell you very much. No, and some, you know... Yeah, here he lives, here's his name, he's collecting for X, Y, Z. Okay, you don't know what the Dikas they go... So we go by what Walter was was relying on, the fact that it said... That when you when he comes to your door, you're yeah. not required to do the badika. The badika is only by them. They have a chiv to do the badika. They didn't do it. You are not at fault for whatever you give them you here at the doorstep. The you should use. And you, we yeah. said, yeah. we said, Bernie, the, the only time you don't get a schar is when you, you know, know you know for sure that he's a liar. We know. We never know. That. So the yeah. design is that on the on the, uh, on the camera who are supposed to be doing the badika. Yes, I keep in the how are they supposed to check on every person who comes in? Pretty hard. Well, they're supposed to be doing their check. I just want to start. I want to have a haskala, like, just like the. They'd rather have the money.